employment and investment. I have a few proposals to promote investment and foster employment. First of all, to bolster the Indian startup ecosystem, boost the entrepreneurial spirit, and to support innovation. I propose to abolish the so-called angel tax for all classes of investors. Second, there is tremendous potential for cruise tourism in India to give a fillip to this employment generating industry. I am proposing a simpler tax regime for foreign shipping companies operating domestic cruises in the country. Third, India is a world leader in the diamond cutting and polishing industry which employs a large number of skilled workers. To further promote the development of this sector, we would provide for safe harbor rates for foreign mining companies selling raw diamonds in the country. Fourth, to attract foreign capital for our development needs, I propose to reduce the corporate tax rate on foreign companies from 40 to 35 percent. Deepening the tax base, I have a couple of proposals for deepening the tax base. First, security transaction tax on futures and options of securities is proposed to be increased to 0.02% and 0.1% respectively. Second, for reasons of equity, I propose to tax income received on buyback of shares in the hands of recipients. Other proposals. To improve social security benefits, deduction of expenditure by employers towards NPS is proposed to be increased from 10 to 14 percent of the employee's salary. Similarly, deduction of this expenditure up to 14 percent of salary from the income of employees in private sector, public sector banks and undertakings opting for the new tax regime is proposed to be provided. Indian professionals working in multinationals get ESOPs and invest in social security schemes and other movable assets abroad. Non-reporting of such small foreign assets has penal consequences under the Black Money Act. Such non-reporting of movable assets up to 20 lakh rupees is proposed to be depenalized. Other major proposals in the finance bill relate to withdrawal of equalization levy of 2%, expansion of tax benefits to certain funds and entities in IFSCs, and immunity from penalty and prosecution to Benamidar on full and true disclosure so as to improve conviction under the Benami Transaction Prohibition Act 1988.